massive amount of our everyday activities, be it studying, socializing, shopping or banking, can now be done on our sofa with smartphone. And cars, trains and planes take us from one place to another. However, in this age when the body seems so often to be absent, we have also witnessed an increased attention to our bodies. One example is the growth of fitness tracking apps and devices. According to statistics, in 2016, about 40% of people aged 20 to 40 were using a fitness tracker, and the number is growing. Digital technologies that provide us knowledge about the functions of our bodies are ever-present in contemporary culture. Researchers often mention that we live in a metric culture, a culture increasingly shaped by numbers. The body, like other aspects of our lives, are also increasingly quantified. We now have what researchers have called the data double, a double of our body in numbers, measured by the different digital tools we use. This quantified body can seem like a neutral information about our bodily activities and functions about how many steps we walked, how many minutes we were sitting, what we ate today, how many hours we slept. However, it can have a profound impact on our sense of self in everyday life. We use metrics to justify actions and decisions regarding our bodies, to prioritize some things over others, to define what is worth pursuing. The data becomes related to our identities, the sense of who we are. And top of that, the privacy of the data and potential consequences of collecting this data is an important question that many of us have not spent that much time considering. In everyday life, the body is not often available to our conscious awareness. However, the digital age has brought a new type of bodily presence, which my colleague and I have called the digi-appearing body. The scholarly community is divided as to the value of digital technologies, such as self-tracking, for our lifestyles and bodily experiences. Studies have shown that self-tracking practices can have differentiated impact on the users. On one hand, researchers have found that trackers seem to be a promising way of helping people to become more aware of the body and increasing their autonomy over their bodies. This, in turn, could help us avoid the problems associated with the disembodied and busy lives that many of us are leading. If the digital device may help us pay more attention to our food and activity, so the argument goes, then perhaps we can live more mindfully and make more conscious choices in our daily lives. This would be an increasing awareness of the body and self-knowledge. And self-knowledge is something that has been valued by philosophers for centuries. However, instead of engaging in introspection, you can now get to know yourself by opening an app on your phone. Is this the kind of self-knowledge we will value the most in the future? On the other hand, other researchers raise caution that the self-tracking industry is fueled by the insecurities of our late modern lives and the anxiety produced by the expectations of living a healthy and active life. Either way, a recent review article showed that while there has been a boom of activity tracking in the past decade, the daily physical activity itself has declined in many developed countries. As such, these trackers alone might not be enough to get people more active. But even if it would work, the digital technologies bring forth an understanding of the body as a problem to be controlled and endlessly enhanced. This, in turn, could lead us to adopt a mechanical and anxious way of living. Sociologist Hartmut Rosa argues that self-tracking practices lead us to lose connection with ourselves and the world. He contrasts this way of being with his concept of resonance, which is a state of feeling in touch and affected by the world. For Rosa, a quantified life is not a good life. What do you think? <laughs>